Hey guys, it's Michael and Bryce and Riley. We are kicking off 2021 with a huge thanks to the newest members who have joined our Patreon, BCC The Other Side. It's the parallel dimension to the Bigfoot Collectors Club where for $5 a month, you unlock three to five bonus episodes every month. Since our last episode here on the main feed, we dropped another Northern Frights episode, a movie club episode. We've been watching a ton of crazy Bigfoot movies from the 70s and 80s. I mean, there's a mug involved that pulls magic numbers out of it. It's so fun. (laughs) And our book club review of Where the Footprints End, all about Bigfoot and High Strangeness by Joshua Kutchin and Timothy Renner. And the best part is, that you can drop your personalized RSS feed into your favorite podcast app and listen to the other side, just like you do the BCC. It's a second Bigfoot Collectors Club show. And best, best of all, we'll shout your name out on the podcast just for joining as our thanks to you. To subscribe to the other side and unlock over 120 bonus episodes i cannot oh fucking God. believe it i counted it up today oh my God. um you can unlock those right now and get all caught up uh go to patreon.com slash bigfoot collectors club uh and uh enjoy the other side of the bigfoot collectors club so now it's time for some shout outs we want to thank eric miller thank you Lori montgomery Thank you. Lindsay Trickett. Thanks, Lindsay. My name is Jonas. Thank you. Rebecca Rideout. Thank you. Lucy C. Hawker. Thank you. Joanna Moran. Thank you. Kristen M. Thank you. Will Bailey back again. Thank you, Will. Maggie McPumpkin. Thank you. I mean, I hope that's your last name, Maggie. Please be real. If, if it's, it's not, it is. If it's not, yes, exactly. It is now. <laughs> Amy Cowie. Thank you. Cassie Phelps. Thank you. Edwin Stevens. Thank you. Stephen Lovins. Thank you. Jonah Tidyman. Thank you. Also, Stephen, it might be pronounced Stefan. If so, I'm going to say it again. Stefan Lovins. Thank you. Mara. Thank you. Nikki Rotunda. Thanks, Nikki. Taco 2077. Thank you. Nicholas Valenzuela. Thank you. Cassie. Thank you. John Arassi. Thank you. And Carrie McCormick. Thank you. Thank you, you beautiful Club Scouts, for subscribing to the other side. And now it is time <clears throat> for the show. <laughs> it's Bigfoot Collectors Club with Bryce and Michael. <laughs> I know a ghost story or two. Let's do this. <laughs> Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Bigfoot Collectors Club, the show where we talk to amazing guests about their personal paranormal history and share stories of high strangeness. I'm your host, Michael McMillan. With me always is your other host, Bryce Johnson, and our super producer, Riley Bray. Happy New Year! Ah. Happy Happy New Year! Um, Goodbye, 2020. Goodbye. Yeah. Farewell. Goodbye. Good riddance. For for you guys, it's 2021, but we're gonna let you in on a secret. This is our final recording of 2020. <laughs> so uh we're still lingering. The, yeah, but but by the time you hear this, everything's gonna be awesome again. Um, you know, maybe <laughs> uh-huh. you guys are are listening and experiencing the promise of of hoverboards for the first time, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, or maybe Oasis got back together. <laughs> I don't on know. Hoverboards. <laughs> yeah, they and their comeback tour is on hoverboards that they yeah. that that the that, that Noel and Liam bought for one another to get over their long standing feud. Beautiful story. What a, what a way to start the year. Seriously. We don't know how it's going to play out. We don't even know if Uncle Dickie's alive yet. We don't. <laughs> 
yeah. our one our one original sketch character that solely exists in our manscape ads yeah. i hope you guys saved him we don't know we might know you might know listening to this episode yeah. if there's a manscape dad but uh we don't know there's, it's a it's a big mystery hey you can't um, pitch ball products forever you know that's true all good well, things come to an end i'll that's tell you right. what it feels like you're already saying Uncle Dickie's dead. I'll pitch ball products as long as I need to. Um, because everything's so unpredictable, uh, I thought it would be best to bring a guest back to the show who is reliable. Mm-hmm. He's he's a staple. Yes. He's, a, he's a classic BCC guest. Oh, my God, guest. I sound so boring already. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ruin it, Kev. He's... He hasn't been on the show for almost two years, which is what? insane. Whoa. Uh, tells you how time has flown. Um, hey guys, uh, you know him. He's a funny guy. He's an actor. He's a comedic performer. You've seen him on shows like Nobody's. He's part of the, the classic historic groundlings here in L.A. Uh, and, of course, he's our special boy. Uh, welcome back to the show, Mr. <laughs> Kevin Kirkpatrick. Yeah. Uh, wait, What's listen up, to Kevin? this. Hi, hi. I love being called a special boy. <laughs> well, I'm giving, what, what I'm giving you a Bigfoot before? howl. Oh, oh, is that from the thing that came in the mail? Yes, this is from the uh, uh, Archie McPhee emergency Bigfoot um, uh, like call device that was sent in by a listener, uh, Rachel, for Christmas. So thank you, Rachel. Nice. From um, over here, it sounds almost exactly like a Model T horn. <laughs> <laughs> I so think that, w- that wouldn't lure in a Bigfoot then, is what you're saying. <laughs> well, I don't know. Maybe well, it would. That's I heard what... back then you could just honk and they would walk right up. <laughs> yes. I was going to say Model T horns were actually, the horn was originated to mimic the sound of a Bigfoot because it's, it both attracts the wild man and then also scares pedestrians away. Hmm. Mm. Little, no little no, nobody lies better than Michael Montgomery. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell, don't tell my listeners that. Uh, when have I ever lied to you, Kevin? Never. Oh, that's true. Um, well, speaking of New Year's, uh, last year I think I was the only one that made a resolution, and that was uh, that I was going to draw more, which I didn't. So fuck, <laughs> fuck that. Uh, what about you guys? Any, any, anything to look forward to in 2021? Oh man, no idea. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a vast uncertain void that we're staring down. (laughs) Just yeah, Uh, live through the pandemic, get out of this fucking thing alive. How's that for a goal? I like it. It's chipper. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. Has a nice ring to it. Yeah. You know, we're in rough re- re-entry zone here, so I get it. It's appropriate. What about you, Kevin? I have a resolution for 21. Let's oh, hear okay. it. I want to travel and I want to be married. Oh, All that's right. nice. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, let us know how that goes. <laughs> I will. <laughs> Those are good ones. I like that one. It's very like, uh, what's like a good, like, it's like, uh, what, what am I thinking of? What's a good like women's magazine from the like, like, like McCall's or something? I feel like Harper's that's Bazaar. Harper's Bazaar, like travel and get married in the new year. Like that's that's like uh, something that would be on the cover of one of those magazines. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and and in that order because my god don't travel as a single woman. <laughs> right. <laughs> god no. Or travel to find a husband mm. for 1956. <laughs> All right. Well, time let's travel? get started. Yeah, time travel. Yeah, we'll time travel. All right. Gotcha. Go back in time. Get that husband. Um, mm. All right, guys. Well, we uh, have a delightful bag of listener files for you today. Um, uh, but before that, we're going to do a segment that we haven't done in a while. And listen, we're easing back into the show, and this is like you know, this is like a this is like a, a holiday, a lovely holiday hangover episode. This is just hanging with the boys. Great, I this love week. that. Um, so everybody, you know, uh, get get an Alka Seltzer and some soda water, 
or or get yourself another cocktail because you're not ready to let go of the holidays yet. Eat that last cookie that you've been thinking about and 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 settle in. Settle. Uh, in. I've got a, I got a tasty Bex non-alcoholic, and I, and I'm sitting here. That's right. In, in the buff, looking out at at, at the sunset <laughs> going down. That's right good. on. Yeah, I thought I, I thought I'd do this one in the nude. I really did. I was like, I like it. fuck it. <laughs> He's gone method. We God. we for, we forgot that you. Uh, this is by the way. Uh, <laughs> This will be like five weeks for our listeners, but Bryce is still in Hawaii. He's gone full island time now. So <laughs> I'm ready to get off the island. I really am. Dude. He's texting. Like... Don't believe him. He's been texting me. Should I take surfing lessons all week? I'm yes. like, yes, do it. You're there forever. <laughs> I totally pushed out. I was like, you know what? I got to film one more scene. I don't want to get whacked in the head with a surfboard and then fuck production. And and I was like, those guys got to go out there deep to catch the waves. I was like, I, I you know, that's out there. I, I want to have my feet at least like touch the touch the floor of the ocean and to feel pretty safe. So I don't know. I'm not a danger mouse, you know. That was probably the right choice. I mean, you know. For look, look at me making smart choices. It's yeah, like a whole good, responsible me 15 years ago. Oh, a <laughs> lot of bad choices. Well, that, uh, it's growth, I guess. Yeah, right. I think so. Look at you go. Did you ever bungee jump? No, no fucking way. I'm afraid of heights, dude. Hmm. I would, I though. To, I would, though. I would to, to, to face my fear. I would do it. I, I would do it. Yeah. Yeah, Maybe. skydiving would be a tougher. Would fuck both of those, huh? I don't man, know. I'd rather skydive than bungee jump. Would you? Yeah, man. I feel like more could go wrong with a bungee jump, maybe. But right, you're probably yeah. right. I'll bet. I, I would love to know the numbers on that. Uh, injuries and deaths, uh, skydiving versus bungee jumping. I bet you're right, Kevin. I don't know. I'm staying away though. Yeah. I feel I feel like you have enough time to get your affairs in order if you realize that parachute's not going to open up. <laughs> you know what I mean? You have <laughs> you have enough time to go. Okay, well this is it. I'm going to pretend I'm flying and I'm gonna I'm gonna send send out all the love vibes I can and for, ask for forgiveness. Oh yeah, no shit. You know, but bungee jump. You don't know what the fuck just happened. No. It's too late. It's over no. and done with. <laughs> I think. Different people obviously have, um, it's like a sense, it's like a, th a thrill sensitivity that's quite varied where like I can be thrilled by doing the least little thing. And I yes. feel so lucky for that because, yeah. you know, some people have to almost die before they feel anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kevin, what's thrilling for you? Like what, what's a nice, good, like level six thrill? Oh, level six. Okay. Level six would be level six would be like, I'm pouring my scotch and nothing dribbles on my gorgeous <laughs> countertop. <laughs> nothing, not a, not a drop. That's good. I and like both that. of the dogs are sleeping. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The heart rate if goes the dogs up like were, just a little bit. <clears throat> Like doing something cute while I poured a perfect glass of scotch, I'd probably have to like sit down and just catch my breath. Right. It'd be overwhelmed. <laughs> I dig that. Well, get ready because we're about to talk to uh, about some people who have had some thrilling experiences. I'm bringing back a, uh, a segment we haven't done in a while. This is Mufon UFO Roundup. Yeah! 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 Get over here, UFO! <laughs> so kevin who, that? who said that get over here ufo that was me right <laughs> my god the talent <laughs> yeah yeah the depth, really. a lot of untapped yeah. stuff going on right over here was that was that like a seven on your thrill list kevin <laughs> oh eight and a half <laughs> it sounded pre-recorded like it was, had been pulled off of a nationally syndicated cartoon <laughs> now now we're now our to our guest this week is like a very bemused indiana grandmother who hasn't <laughs> had a live chat on the internet yet <laughs> i mean i yes i mean that's the role of a lifetime in my opinion but okay so kevin what i'm doing here is i've gone to the mufon which is short for mufo mutual ufo network this is basically a civilian network that compiles all the UFO sightings uh, around the country. And I've gone to their UFO tracker 
and I've looked for just I've, I grabbed three recent UFO sightings from North America over within the past month of recording this episode. So this is sort of like a temperature check of what's happening out there with the world of UFOs. Great. Oh. Um, cool. And I, I thought to add to the joy, I'm going to rate all of these after after we we listen to them using the emergency Bigfoot with a howl, a snort, a roar or a groan. Mm. OK, so we'll see how this goes. So this first one is from November 28th, uh, 2020, from Bloomington, Indiana. This is where uh, Kevin's character of the grandmother lives. <laughs> Here we go. Altitude, over 500 feet, under cloud cover. Duration, one hour and five minutes. Features, unknown. Flight path, hovering, then path. Path with directional change, path, then hovering. Shape, circle. And here's the witness. I was followed for over 60 miles in the area between Bloomington, Indiana and Washington, Indiana for, oh. from 37 highway, apparently, which goes through Bloomington all the way to the exit. Then when I got off to go to Washington off I-69 South, I was also followed by a black government sedan with blacked out windows and windshield during <sighs> this whole time. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm going to give that. <laughs> snort <laughs> oh my nice. god it just reminds me of like Ray Liotta and Goodfellas when he's fucking they're, they're fucking following me Karen Karen <laughs> nothing better than a paranoid uh, like a paranoid UFO uh, eyewitness account where you're yeah. being followed by the UFO and the government at the same time how does she know that the government sedan wasn't following the UFO and she was just caught in the middle? <laughs> it was had nothing to point. had nothing to do with them. <laughs> no. <laughs> Kevin, what do you think? A circular oh. shaped UFO following them for an hour, followed by a black government sedan with blacked out windows. What is the largest rating I can give it? Um, you can give it a howl, a snort, a roar, or a groan. So the the next best thing to a howl is a snort? Well, I would say That's it would go groan, system, really. snort, roar, howl. Mm. Least, to, least to best. Okay. Well, I'm giving it a howl. Okay, here we go. Excellent. Excellent sound design, Michael. <laughs> you add that government sedan in, and I am like drenched in a great way <laughs> fantastic <laughs> all right moving on to the next one ashton pennsylvania from december 11th 2020 distance 501 feet one mile altitude unknown duration 12 minutes features <laughs> none flight path path then hovering shape triangle i'm gonna try to describe this the best i can I was sitting in my car in a parking lot at a local bank waiting for it to open. The sun was still low enough in the sky at 9 a.m. being December. I really think the sun angle had something to do with me observing this object. I also feel I wasn't supposed to see it. I always watch airplanes. I, we, live near an airport, and I always had an interest in aviation. So I know the usual aircraft that fly around. So first off in the distance, I'm going to guess two miles away, approaching from the west, I saw what I thought was a flock of white birds. Hmm. It appeared to me like flashes of white, like birds flapping their wings. So my first observation was this was a mass moving across the sky with no distinct outline, just flashes of white that, again, I thought was flying birds. Actually, a commercial aircraft flew in the direction of it and about maybe 5,000 feet and climbing taking off from the airport a few miles away. I remember thinking, I wonder if that pilot sees those birds, and I hope they aren't close enough for a bird strike. It was hard to gauge the distance, actually, but I don't think it was that close, so I kind of kept my eye on this mass, still thinking it was birds, so I wasn't really watching close. They were getting closer. This is where it gets fuzzy. I don't recall the actual moment I realized it wasn't birds. I remember watching this mass move across the sky, and then suddenly, it was almost directly above my car. I looked up, and the best I could describe it is, there was a lot of light up there. Oh, wow. I can make out a triangle outline, and I saw four lights, white, along the back edge. 
There appeared to be a really bright light aura, translucent type energy coming from the center, like it was glowing. But I don't know if this was also the sun reflecting off the surface. I was still in my car, so I couldn't hear any noise. There were one or two people nearby, but they didn't seem to notice. I wanted to jump out and say, Does anyone see this? But somehow I felt I was the only one. I reached for my phone to try and get a photo, and I took my eyes off it for a second. I felt like I already knew when I looked back up it would be gone, and it was. Damn. I lost it. This shook me up. I don't know if this is something I should be worried about. You should worry. Big time. <laughs> Whoa. That's, a, that's a pretty that's intense a pretty encounter with the yeah. black triangle. Yeah. Right above him, too, huh? I would have yeah. fucking got out of that car so This fast. was only five days ago as of, the, of this recording. Man, that's crazy. Kevin? Wow. Personal thoughts, emotions, and of course, a Bigfoot uh, Bigfoot nonverbal rating. rating. Yep. Uh, First thought I did. Why is Michael reading this like a very angry (laughs) 12-year-old? Because I still play high school, baby. (laughs) (laughs) Um, God, I, I, I'm a tiny bit like just confused by it, which I'm, I think that's, what the writer experienced as well yeah Um, confusion i can't make heads or tails of it uh i because there was no government officials involved (laughs) i'm gonna (laughs) give it a snort okay Mm. you know what i i don't think there was anything there i think i i just feel like this guy got real disoriented for a minute (laughs) Right. Bryce, do you what do you what's your take on these black triangles? UFOs like out of this world, interstellar, in, interdimensional, or man-made? You know, there's a I can make a case for both of them, right? I mean, a, a lot of people say that they're these government crafts. What do they call them, like TR thirty eights or something? But I don't believe that, right? Because if you look back at the Phoenix Lights case, those were all triangles there was a whole parade of them and people could actually were they triangles or were they boomerangs this is what i'm always confused about they were they were deltas they were they were i people described them as both right so people described them as being triangles some people because uh, here's a big misconception it wasn't just one huge craft that flew over phoenix lights uh it flew over phoenix it was a it was a whole bevy of them it was like a ufo parade uh but people described them as as triangles um so yeah i don't know man i i don't know it's crazy look if you if you witness something and you report it to mufon you know think about you know it takes a little effort to file a report and then they I, usually follow back up on those reports uh, somebody from mufon <laughs> will contact you so you know. i'm gonna say i'm not sure how much effort it takes because one of them was literally <laughs> just someone finding a dead alligator oh <laughs> Maybe you're right. I've never reported. No, no, no UFO involved. They just was like, they were just describing their dog running out of their house and finding a dead alligator. And that was it. (laughs) They (laughs) literally have no one else to talk. (laughs) That's what it was. There's no alligator, mutual alligator agency. So I'm just going to use this one. Uh, Closest thing. (laughs) Mutual gator network. (laughs) I like, I did, I was I kept trying to look to be like did they think that the alligator was abducted and operated on what it, it was nope. like I read it five times over and it's just they're like I, my me, it literally was called my memory is of a dead gray alligator <laughs> that's what it was called and then it was all about them describing living this all by the way took place they reported it this week but it took place in 1996 <laughs> oh my god and it was The story was their dog was barking at the door. They opened the door and ran out into the swamp. They chased after their dog and they found a dead alligator. And that was it. That's amazing. That's amazing. In 1996. Yeah. And he's reporting it now. I mean, good. I mean, fun. That was, that's a memorable day for sure. But I don't understand why it's on the UFO tracker. All right. We got one more. This is from Charlottesville, North Carolina. 12. Oh, sorry. December 14th, 2020. Distance over one mile. Altitude over 500 feet under cloud cover. Duration 10 minutes. Features other. I don't know what that means. Mm. Flight path. Hovering then path. I guess that means 
Like they're hovering for a while, then they move on a path. Yeah, maybe. They yeah. like fly in a line. Yeah. Shape. Bullet. Missile. My niece, who has never seen a UFO, was walking the dog around 5.30 p.m. It was still light out. She saw two lights that were glowing orange and red and then white. She came to get me, and they were still hanging in the sky. One went straight up, and you could see a streak of light. And then the other went the opposite way. We didn't get photos of those, but we went in the backyard around 6.30 p.m., and we saw a glowing orb. There was a video oh, attached shit. below. This was in the north direction, then the, in the west. We saw slow-moving lights. My niece was visibly shaken, and she's never seen a UFO. I have experienced UFOs many times, but not in my backyard. It was an incredible show. Wow. And there were videos. They just look like blinking lights in the sky. Hard to tell what it is, but they look like some of the orb videos that you've shown us. Uh, uh, Bryce, I will put a link in the show notes if you want to take a look but i I didn't think it was enough to be like guys watch this video you know that's crazy if you guys saw an orb out in your backyard would you like go outside and try and make contact with it or would you just stand and watch from the window or like make contact psychically or like (laughs) no like like, like go try and like you know touch it and get under it or like you know see if you can like yeah i don't know just like get right on the orb was the orb how how high off the ground was it? Well, they say uh, it says it was over five hundred feet under cloud cover. I think so those were the other good. lights. There was like it was like it sounds like sort of two s- separate things. They saw the lights in the sky and then it says an we went in, in the backyard, backyard around six thirty p.m. and we saw a glowing orb. There is a video attached below. It was, it was up in the sky. Oh, for I see. sure. Okay. Okay. You know, it was taller than that. a than a five story building. Oh, to answer okay. your question, though, Bryce, if there was an orb in my backyard, absolutely yes, You'd I go would go outside. outside. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. I yep. mean, how do you not? Yeah, I there's agree. an orb in your yard. Good call. This person needs to be clear in their writing because it did sound like there was a Harry Potter snitch hovering like <laughs> right above his kid's <laughs> swing set. <laughs> He, you know what? There may have been. It's true. I, I'm confused as well. I think those orbs will electrocute me, so I am staying away. Damn I know those that. shit will fucking torch me the second they, they get a chance to. Yeah. yeah. Keeping me, me and my dog away from it. I don't want to be fried from the inside out. What about you, Bryce? Oh, man. I, I don't know. I'd probably, I'd probably have to go outside and, and see what it wanted. We all know you're a scaredy <laughs> cat now. You've confessed it. Yeah, that's true. Uh, oh, I don't see Bryce walking away from a from a UFO. <laughs> no, that's what thank I'm you, Kevin. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That's pretty true. That's true. Uh, he's going to wait if... patiently for you at the bottom of a water slide because he's scared <laughs> of that. But he's definitely going to make contact with an alien life form. <laughs> uh, no, I, I'm not going up the to that water. I'll just be right here. <laughs> with your towel waiting for you all right i got give me your camera i'll take a photo of you on your way now <laughs> still carries the camera um kevin we got a groan a snort a roar or a howl what are you gonna give this story um i'm gonna give it uh a groan and i don't really still don't understand the ranking system <laughs> give it a groan here it yes. Yeah, let's play it again. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh my god. Well, everybody, that was another edition of Mufon <laughs> UFO Got Got a hell of a show here, boys. <laughs> Whatever you do, please never get real um Bigfoot sound effects. Just please keep using that toy. Oh. A hundred percent. This is going to bring us a lot of joy. Thank you, listener Rachel. All right, Kevin. Uh, just before we move on, any 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 new paranormal experiences in your life? Have you experienced anything strange since the last time you were on the show that you can't explain? No. Great. We have a uh, game that we like to play with all of our listeners. And in fact, Kevin, you've only played this game over on our Patreon on the other side. We have a new updated list. So I think you should give it a shot. I'm going to go down a list of phenomena. And if you're into it, you're going to say, believe it. If you're not into it, you're going to say bullshit. And if you're somewhere in between, you still got to pick one. This is a game that we like to call bullshit or believe it. 
Kevin Kirkpatrick, on your mark, get set, ghosts. Believe it. UFOs. Bullshit. Bigfoot. <sighs> Bullshit. ESP. Oh, right in the middle. <laughs> you must pick one. Um, believe it. Shadow people. Bullshit. Unicorns. Bullshit. I Alien. wish, but bullshit. Alien abductions. Bullshit. Yeti. Bullshit. Mothman. Bullshit. Out of body experiences. Ah, uh, believe it. Tarot cards. Bullshit. Demonically possessed dolls. Bullshit. <laughs> the healing power of crystals. Um. Bullshit. An alien spacecraft crashed at Roswell. Um. I know I said UFOs are bullshit, but I'm going to say. I'm going to say believe it just to kind of challenge my own self. Good call. Mm-hmm. Loch Ness Monster. Uh, bullshit. Atlantis. Bullshit. Haunted houses. Um, like, uh, believe it. Skunk ape. Bullshit. The Jersey Devil. <laughs> I don't know what that is, so bullshit. <laughs> the Biblical Devil. Believe it. Speak. <laughs> wow, sounds strangely uh, turned on. Speaking to the dead. Um, bullshit. Mermaids. Bullshit. The government is hiding the truth about Sasquatch. Mm, bullshit. Past lives. Not because I love. Not because I think the government's my best friend and they're going to be honest with me. But <laughs> okay. Past lives. Bullshit. Life on other planets. Believe it. Life after death. Yeah, believe it. Well done, well Kevin done. Patrick. All right. What did I score? Um, you did really score, good. You scored. You scored one of these. <laughs> right. Actually, you, you scored one of these. Oh well. Yeah. That was a roar. We'll give you a roar for that one. Um, so not not into UFOs, but definitely believe on life on other planets. Yeah, I just I think I just said bullshit on UFOs because there's been I think I I, I don't think they're around as often as people say. And I think if nothing else, I just think 90 percent of the sightings are maybe bullshit. But like mm. or, or or people want to believe. But do I think they're actually seeing AFO? No. But do I think that one could have crashed at Roswell? Yeah, I think so. I like that. Yeah, that works yeah. for me. Yeah, I'll take but that. I don't think it's a perfect disc with two like uh, you know big headed aliens in it. But I think something that they can't figure out, like some debris or something left behind. Sure, Kevin. Yeah, yeah. I think you're closer to the truth than you actually know. You know what I love about right. it is like, so of the thousands and thousands of UFO reported sightings and, and even Bigfoot sightings, all it takes, all it takes is all it takes them, <laughs> is for one of them to be true. You know what I uh-huh. mean? And that's yeah. it. And then that proves that, uh, that they exist. Yeah. That's totally, totally true. We'll catch that Bigfoot one of these days. Don't we gonna you get worry, em. boys. One of these days. We're going to get it. <laughs> All right. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, it's time to open up the L Files once again. And with Beyond Meat, who gives a fuck now? That shit's just, it's good. Beyond Meat makes That's me a little science gassy. That's magic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It makes me a little gassy. The Del Taco Beyond Meat, have you had that? No, I haven't had that. I haven't, it's, it's but a I've, gassy experience, I've, but made, a uh, I've made gringo tacos at home with like the old El Paso shells. Oh, yeah. And like cheese, and I've done that because that's how we used to make them back, back home in Kansas. Oh, in the suburbs. Oh, there's Kevin refilling his scotch right now. <laughs> that was not. 
I hope that's on your show. Oh. Yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, yeah, listeners, we're talking about going vegetarian in 2021, or maybe well, we're just vegan. talking about. I yeah. think we're talking about eating less meat, right? So my yeah. my philosophy is you don't have to like just totally commit to it and be like it's not like drinking right it's like if i have one more drink i'm fucking off the wagon and i'm i'm getting drunk tonight but it's like with with uh with eating meat you could just be like you know what i just i'm gonna eat less meat you don't have to like commit to never having meat again you know yeah i think it's a great way it's a great approach it's a great way to encourage it doesn't make it so like such a big thing for people to have a huge impact yeah i mean i i went actually to a ruth chris the other night i had a nice steak and like because i haven't had a filet mignon in years and i was just like i'm feeling like a filet mignon you know island time bryce man (laughs) island time bryce and i'll tell you what though it's like but when it when it got to my plate i and i don't do this with every meal but I I'm, I had a little acknowledgement go on in my psyche, like, oh, I appreciate what this animal went through to get to my plate. You know what I mean? That's and, good. And I do it, that. I do. I do that. I honestly quietly do that uh, yeah. when I'm eating meat. I just kind of try to, if I, re- I try to take a moment to be like, right, this thing died, so I could eat this. So I have to appreciate that. And that's, you know, I think that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I just eat plants with reckless abandon. Yeah, eat those fucking <laughs> plants. They they died for you too, Riley. That's right, and I chew them up. You know, I think I think I'm just gonna kind of tell myself I'm vegan, and then I think if I, if I set my sights on that, where I will end up is exactly what we're talking about. Yeah, that's a way to do it. There you go. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Guys, but I think we're... I have to say I'm vegan so that I remember to opt out of meat more often look <laughs> humans are omnivores right just put a little lean a little bit more into the vegetarian side of the, your omnivore eating uh yeah habit. do you know what i like just as much as meat almost i really like beans oh, oh yeah <laughs> yeah beans are fucking like well, well, I, I, caps I, I, from kevin kirkpatrick <laughs> <laughs> we're about to get in all I your get letters excited. about beans <laughs> dude like a can of like giant red kidney beans that looks oh, delicious yeah. to me. Yes. Oh, yeah, Maybe yeah. you were a coal miner like back in the 1800s in a past life. I have God. I have so many so many cans of beans in my pantry. It's, yeah. it's my main staple. It's like, yeah. it's like, like, red food. kidney beans are so good, good on a salad. Like oh man, crush it. Uh, mm-hmm. Yes, I love them that way. And I also love a very kind of um new orleans style beans and rice you know like red beans and rice kind yes, of jam. Sir. yes sir. beans and rice you know is a complete protein too it has all the necessary amino acids the, com- the combination of the two together guys i've said that yeah. so many times in front of grace that she if i say that in front of her now she'll be like she just rolls her eyes and she's like god damn it with the beans and rice <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> and also saying, hummus and pita so there protein. you go just it's interesting foods developed to uh, you know suit our nutrition listen I, I, I pictured the- you guys in your mountain retreat, where I that's what I call your estate in the hills. Yeah. Um, yeah thank you. Thank you. You're in your mountain retreat, and she's behind you about five feet back brushing your hair, your long, <laughs> long hair. Accurate. Yes. Go on. And you're just in front of the fire, and you just tell her, you know, and then you launch into your bean tirade. Yeah, or be, yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty much mid-2020. Yeah, and then, and then she, like, up. pulls his hair a little too hard. And he's like, ow! Ow! <laughs> Grace. That's All right. Great. Well, before we lose our last listener, let's <laughs> jump into L Files. These are stories that our listeners have written in about their paranormal experiences. If you have a paranormal experience and you want to share it with Bigfoot Collectors Club, please write to us at Bigfoot Collectors Club at gmail.com. All right. Here we go. I'm going to ask Kevin, our guest this week, to read our first story of the night. All right. Well, this is a story sent to you by Johnny, and I really like my stories tonight. I'm just going to say I'm on board. Um, (laughs) Sorry if I mess anything up. I did read this ahead of time, and now I've had a couple glasses of scotch. So here we go. You're in the right place. You're in the wheelhouse. (laughs) I believe. Okay. (laughs) Here we go. It's titled, My First Paranormal Experience. Hi, all. First off, big fan of the show. All right. I am a terrible storyteller, so I apologize. All right. Come on, Johnny. Don't sell yourself short. Yeah. Yesterday, 1031, so All Hallows' Eve, 
Mm. We received a package made out to a Connie Chavez. It was our address. We moved here back in March. We received mail addressed to the previous tenants previously, but none of them had that name. I looked up Connie Chavez Phoenix. Now, when I first read the story, I was like, why does he, why Phoenix? I didn't even think of the city, but turns out that's what he was looking up. He's just Googling like, Connie why? Chavez and uh, X-Men characters by mistake at the same time. <laughs> Cosplay. Yeah. yeah, I was like, why Why do you assume already this envelope is for someone who's a bird that rose out of some flames? Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, Phoenix, Arizona. So he looked up Connie Chavez, Phoenix, and the first result was an obituary from back in 2013. He thought nothing of it. Oh, I'm now I'm I need to read rather than paraphrase. Okay. He said <laughs> I like that you're interpreting it though. That's <laughs> yeah, kind yeah. of a fun way to do it. Okay. Think nothing of it. Package was from mom's meals and it was fourteen meals. I tried calling the company, but they are closed till Monday. I noticed on the company's site that it was catered towards recently discharged patients and the elderly. Being a decent human I make a comment asking if anyone needs meals on Reddit in the Phoenix area since we don't have a need for all that. Fast forward to this morning when our battery operated Lady of Guadalupe candle was turned on. We haven't turned that on in years. Hmm. The switch is on the bottom, so you would have to lift it. Today, is the start of the Day of the Dead, and yesterday was Halloween. What are your thoughts on this? Thanks, guys, and keep up the awesome work. Best, Johnny. All right. Wow. Well, I'm gonna I look love up. when people sign uh, letters best. I got to remember to do that. I throw a best um, in every now and then. All right, let well, me this see. This one, I already have figured out. <laughs> what, what hit us? What is it? Well, Johnny has a ghost who used to live in his house, and girl is hungry, <laughs> and she's she's trying to get fourteen meals in her uh, before November hits. <laughs> and Johnny fucking gave them away. <laughs> she said, "Damn it, Johnny! God uh-huh. damn it!" Here's here's an alternate. Really, spin, maybe I think that's that would freak me out. This that, I think this is a really interesting one. I if you really think about it, like. This dead woman is getting meals delivered to his address. It gets real interesting. Hmm. Maybe she was like a humanitarian distributing meals, and then so he did her bidding, like her ghost bidding, you know. And then oh, the meals for like her. she ordered the meals from beyond, yeah. Yeah. had them delivered to Johnny yeah. to then make sure they make it out to the public. Well, and part of the story, I think the integral part of the story we're missing is who who maybe that meal got to in the end that maybe really affected their day or their life. You know, uh, maybe it made even a bigger change. I looked up uh, the mm-hmm. Lady of Guadalupe. Uh, the Virgin of Guadalupe is, is the patron saint of Mexico. She's depicted with... Uh, brown skin, an angel and moon at her feet, and rays of sunlight that encircle her. This is the uh, Virgin Mary. Uh, the Virgin Mary, yes. We... Appeared to an Very indigenous familiar. man named Juan Diego. Uh, yeah, so, and, and she represents, uh, what did I look up? Oh, what does Lady of Guadalupe represent? Associated with motherhood, feminism, and social justice. And, and I just want to note, too, no offense. Wait, because... that's... Yeah. I mean, he just said like motherhood yeah. and social justice like this mm. is this yeah. is it's mm. this ghost has a like a very specific like a clear guys, brand guys yeah. <laughs> and yeah. what was the name of the meal company oh yeah mother's mom's right? mom's oh, meal. yeah mom's whoa meal. here's the other thing too our lady of guadalupe is the iconography of the virgin mary that um if you look at it this is not to be offensive. If you're offended by this, then you have to look within yourselves. Trigger warning. It looks <laughs> this. It looks like a vagina. It looks right. like yeah, a vagina because what, what what's the source of all motherhood? A vagina. This is what, so true. The, they're the doors through the through we enter. Most of us enter life through. All right. I recommend so, if you if you're like, what the fuck is Michael talking about? Google 
uh, Virgin Mary It'll be, I'll put it vagina on Instagram. or Labia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Google Virgin Mary vagina. It's, yeah, um, try you know, that. Really try that right. and see what you yeah. get. Um, That'll be good. You're going to get a baby Jesus. Uh, no, but yeah, it's amazing. You, you just know, get you're like absolutely a right. very, you get a very grainy video of Jesus coming out. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody took a video of this. Why didn't we just it Google like it? It was first generation iPhone, so it's yeah. not fair. <laughs> it's just shot on a Blackberry. Um, so, yeah, uh, I don't know. I mean, my Gut says that maybe these were sent there by mistake, but that the spirit of Connie Chavez was acknowledging Johnny's uh, decency and being like, thank you. This was a glitch. It shouldn't have come to me, but that's nice that you're trying to figure this out. And thank you for recognizing me. Click, click. Here's a little hi, hi on the uh, Lady of Guadalupe candle. That's Amen. what I'm thinking. Amen. Either way. Whether she orchestrated it or just gave him a, a fun thumbs up, like mm -hmm. that's the best ghost. Like I'm so jealous that he has Connie. Yeah. Like I want a ghost named Connie who's just like <laughs> the sweetest human being that ever lived. <laughs> you know what the stamp on this one is? You can take the ghost out of social work, <laughs> but you can't take social work out of the ghost. Well uh, done. Amen. All right, Bryce, what do you got there in the old file cabinet? All right, let me see here. Going through my files here. Um, okay, here we go. This one is called Shared Dream. Oh, this must be a response to Last L Files where we were talking about shared dreams. And by the way, uh, Kevin, uh, Bryce and I made a pact that we would try to find each other in our dreams, and then we promptly forgot to do it. So, <laughs> listeners, sorry. Oh, God. We failed that mission. We, yeah. need, we, need to, <laughs> we need to actually try it. All three of us need to try it. Kevin, you're invited too. Yeah, yeah, we could, we should let's all try to meet somewhere in our shared dream tonight. So Bryce, tonight, before we go to bed, let's pick a meeting place. Bryce is just going to bring a lot of oh, '90s yeah. era celebrities along that he's going to like have sex with in front of us. Just a heads up. <laughs> Excellent. I think let's just say right now we're meeting in Hawaii. Great. Okay. Great. Perfect. Great. Yeah. Great. I love right. that. Here we go. But not in the water. Not. Yeah. I am not signing up for a shark dream. Okay. Not no, no I don't shark think dream. they have sharks in Hawaii, do they? And they do in oh, Dream God, Hawaii. They do. Dream sharks. You got to watch out for those because they can. I hate to tell you this, Kevin. Dream sharks, they walk on land. <laughs> oh my god they well show up in fact. bathtubs well known fact i'm not i'm not scared of a land shark but i'll tell you <laughs> hello guys okay i have a weird shared dream experience i wanted to share with you after listening to the latest l files episode the night before easter last year i had one of the worst nightmares of my life i often have vivid dreams and often have moments of deja vu where i am completely one moment ahead in time remembering a dream i had about the moment i'm in Weird stuff, but for whatever reason, I don't dwell on it too much. Cut back. Wait, I'm so sorry. I would never. I normally would not interrupt. Would you just read that again? That my oh, yeah. brain wants to wrap around. That. Yeah, sure. So I often have vivid dreams and often have moments of deja vu where I am completely one moment ahead in time, remembering a dream I had about the moment I'm in. Weird stuff, but for whatever reason, I don't dwell on it too much. Cut back to the night. So she's saying that. She believes her, her deja vu, you know, she's seen what she's seeing in a dream before, and now she's actually living in the right. experience. In other words, she's having prophetic dreams. Um, uh -huh. Cut back to the night before Easter. In my dream, my husband and I are driving to his mom's house about two hours away for Easter, which was our plan for the holiday, when suddenly a car cuts across the lane and collides with our car. The crash is devastating. Our car is totaled and my husband is dead in the seat next to me. At this point, I begin hysterically sobbing in my dream and start to realize I'm also badly injured. Apparently, my sobbing started in real life because the next thing I know, I'm being shaken awake by my husband and I'm just a crying mess. I felt shaken to my core. This felt like a deja vu dream, not a normal nightmare. I end up having a restless night, and thankfully, my husband agrees that we should cancel our holiday plans. I'm way too freaked out to even get in the car. Due to the change in our plans, my parents end up driving to our house to have a couple of beers and catch up. And this is where it gets truly bizarre. My mom is asking why we decided not to go to my in-law's house, and I tell her about my dream. She goes white and looks at my dad, who looks startled. Apparently, 
she had the same dream the night before and was so traumatized by it that she tried to call me and warn me. But my dad insisted she not wake me up and that it was just a bad nightmare. Whoa. I don't, wow. Yeah. I don't know what force was looking out for me and my husband that day, but I am thankful I listened to my gut. I've definitely started taking my dreams a little more seriously now. I'm tempted to start working on lucid dreaming, but I'm also scared of what I may see in my dreams. Thank you for the fantastic podcast. Y'all are the best, and I look so forward to every new episode. Sweet dreams, Hannah. Wow, that's crazy. Wow. That, oh. Yeah. Um, believe it. 100% believe it. I don't know yeah, what's man. behind it, but totally fucking believe in prophetic dreaming. Yeah, dude, absolutely. You know, your you know your gut is like a second brain. Um, there's like more microbes and more living organisms and, and and more connections that happen in the gut than almost in the brain. I'm, I know I'm not saying that right, but that's why they, you know, that's why that expression is go with. You're your saying gut. that that's where the midichlorians are or in your stomach, and that's why you're so attuned to the force. No, 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 no. I'm gonna look it up. Uh, gut versus. <laughs> there's. I think what you're talking about, Bryce, is there's like there's receptors that are tied. Like, there straight is to receptors your gut, to your brain. That yes. Is, like. Yeah, I, the, I the human know. gut is lined go, with but. more than a hundred million nerve cells. It's practically a brain unto itself, and indeed, the gut actually talks to the brain, releasing hormones into the bloodstream that, over the course of about ten minutes, tell us things. Uh, so, yeah, there you but go. Does the gut cause they, dreams? Well, I'm just saying, good for her for listening to her gut. You know, we're mixing mean? metaphors. Yeah, but metaphors. the dreams come related. from your brain, not your gut. That's the problem. I mean, I, I, I think you're saying in the day, the next day. Yes, I was, I was, I was it. excited. She listened to her gut, but yes, uh, but the gut but, was listening to her brain, which was dreaming the dream. <laughs> so they really yeah. are talking to one another. Yeah, that's there you go, there you go. But that, that's fucking crazy, man. I mean, that's wild. That's wild stuff. I, I mean, the only thing I can think of is if like they both were watching Grey's Anatomy together while texting one another, and there was like a big car accident episode that night, and then they fell asleep. Or, yeah. or like sometimes genes line up in such a way that like moms and daughters will have the exact same dream on the same night. But even that is fascinating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we just don't know, but I, that would fucking blow my mind. And I totally believe it. Kevin. Yeah. yeah I mean, I believe it. It's crazy. And it, yeah, it's crazy. I mean, well, here's my question for you guys. Would you really, really your most honest answer? Would you cancel your trip because your significant other had that nightmare? <laughs> oh, like if it was like a trip to like Hawaii or something. I'm excluded and it's like, from this question. I get oh it. It's fine. Well, I guess. I guess in their case, it was just like a road trip or, or yeah. It a, sounded like even, the, maybe the mom maybe even a short drive. Over. I don't know. Right. But. Yeah, that one sounded like a short drive where it wasn't. But like if it was like some like vacation you planned for a long time and God, you just need to get away. And, and then your significant other just wakes up and go, Oh my God, you will not believe what I just dreamed. And then you're like, Oh fuck, here we go. I would just change the flight. I would change the flight. I would be like, let's push it a day or let's, let's fly out on a different flight. Yeah. But what if that's the, but what if that's flight? the, yeah, that's uh, the, thing the old night, huh? tricks, twists, yes. the self-fulfilled prophecy. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, I don't know what yeah. it's like to have a significant other anymore. So I don't know what I would do. <laughs> I think, I mean, grace can be pretty convincing. I'd probably just, be, I would, I would begrudgingly accept. I think. Well, and if, if they were like in Ugh. tears and just yeah. so freaked out, I'd be like, yeah, it's not Maybe. worth it. This is going to stress you out. <laughs> May, May, I, you want, I want convincing tears. You're like, look, I'll go ahead first, okay, and then make sure everything's good, and then you come out. What if you like travel by hot air balloon or something, some sort of you know ridiculous way of going? That they didn't dream of on that. the back of a dragon. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. What if you find out like at the end, of, you're like, well, wait a minute. So we were in the plane, and and then your significant other's like, no, we were flying on a dragon, and the dragon crashed. And you're like, all right, pack your bags, we're going. Yeah, there's the I'm there's just wondering the if there's like a Zillow for like hot air balloon airfares and like you know how destination picks. Like, can yeah, you find out how to get there. I I'm just I just want to know how realistic this dream was, other than the scary part where we died. Because oh if like Mega Man was in it, then I think we're okay. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go switch a light on. I mean, light. let's not let's not tout 
hot air balloon travel as being particularly safe. Yeah. <laughs> this is a gold standard. You know what's better? Let's climb into a basket hanging under a balloon with a bunch of hot air in it. Yeah, no fucking thank you. And what about, yeah. wasn't it, wasn't like not that long ago within the last year, wasn't there a hot air balloon that was all the way really high up in the air and it just caught on fire? And it's like, you know, at that point you're like, oh, well. <laughs> in a minute this basket will plummet a thousand feet to the ground that, that's hey. got to be like top five worst deaths right you're i mean you got, a little, I mean. you got a little more time to get your affairs in order that's all i'm saying it's better than a bungee <laughs> better than bungee and then it's why don't they bungee. give parachutes to those people like are parachutes that like expensive and and that's a good point why don't they why don't we all wear parachutes when we fly on an airplane that why don't we wear helmets when we drive in cars, Kevin? These are questions I think about all the Kevin time. Does. You really does. want to wear a parachute to the airport? Think about that. Uh, I would 100%. Because if that plane's experience, if the plane is in that full, that moment where the plane's like an uncontrolled nosedive, then they should just like have a thing where they peel back a sunroof but, and everybody just gets ejected. The seat <laughs> the cushion instead of a flotation device should be a parachute. I want and then to know you can just why... strap the seat cushion on your back, and then one by one, y'all jump out of the out of the plane door. Now I want my planes to have a sunroof. What the fuck? That's a great <laughs> yeah. idea. Why don't they have sunroofs? Well, not even that being be funny, cool. if somehow magically, like money, wasn't a thing, imagine the features on planes that would <clears throat> the safety features. Like there would be thing all kinds of because technologically we could do it. It's just right. always about money, right? Like, a like giant there should be a parachute. Thing. There should be a parachute big enough for the plane itself. Yeah, you know what? Tickets are pricey already enough. We don't need. We don't need, <laughs> we don't need a plane <laughs> shoot. We're good. <laughs> I think so. I think with a hot air balloon, though, it's just too low altitude for a parachute to do a trick, right? To do its job. No, you can. No, mm-hmm. fucking, you can do it. You can base jump, bro. You got a yeah, chance. At least you got a chance. Yeah, like, it's a ba- it's, yeah, it's a base. You should be able to grab onto the hot air balloon balloon and use that as a parachute. Now I'm imagining burning to death and falling to your death all in one. So it's like, what a shitty way to go. This is a really a par- par- great way to episode. kick off the new year. Yeah, yeah this episode. And there's, by the a, way, there's a shark in the ocean below. It's like surrealist, absurd ways <laughs> to die. Told I told you guys we're you still in 2020. <laughs> you get your tarot cards read and they're like, all I can tell you. Is that your death will be will involve you in a free fall while you're on fire? <laughs> the cards have spoken. Now that if, if some tarot card reader told me that and I had a hot air balloon ca- scheduled for the next day, that I would fucking cancel. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, Riley, what do did you got there? Did oh, I ever sorry, tell you on, guys? Kevin. Okay, not a long story, I promise. Did I ever tell you guys the effect I have on um, psychics? <laughs> I've no. been there. It's, well, that was a joke. That that <laughs> one when Michael and I first met and got our tarot card readings, that was a joke. But <laughs> Kevin but, came out. Kevin came out of his. We were in New Orleans. Kevin came out of his <laughs> tarot card reading. I have never seen an angrier man in my life. <laughs> I came out like, yeah. They kind of said that. He goes, "What do they say to you?" And I was like. Well, they kind of said this and that, and that sounded kind of cool, like you know your standard tarot card reading. And Kevin looked, took, listened to my recap, marched straight to the front desk, and was like, "I want my money back," <laughs> and then continued to bitch out the head of the uh, tarot card reading place because his tarot card reader was super drunk. Good for and- you, Kevin. Good for you. I would have done the same thing. That. Uh, it was awesome my the guy doing mine was probably 80 years old and so drunk and like glad his <laughs> eyes were swimming like so watery and drunk I, and he was just could barely flip a card over and instead of lining them up in like rows and all, he was literally just like discarding into a messy pile like one <laughs> after the other and every card no matter what like one's like a ram giving birth and the next one's like an angel like like you know painting something like the most like drastically different cards and each one he said the same thing with every card oh money you're gonna be rich oh (laughs) money you're gonna be rich 
And after a while, I was like, oh, <laughs> all, the only thing he can barely do in, in his, doing his job drunk is to try to prime me to give him a huge tip because I feel like I'm going to be rich. <laughs> he was just trying to get tipped big. <laughs> That's so Come on, Richie Rich. <laughs> oh, God. No, I mean... All I was going to say about my effect on psychics, and it's just a one-word sentence. I've been to two different, like, um, psych, not card readers, but just like psychic, whatever. And both of them, I go in, I know I'm a skeptic, but I don't say a word. I don't tell them I'm a skeptic and I'm very polite. And I go in and they are s almost immediately so stressed out that they can, they're taking like really short, jagged breaths. Like I had the weirdest experience with some woman in, in Los Feliz that had been highly recommended. And then somewhere else, they can hardly catch their breath <laughs> so what does that mean like am i gonna fucking die like are they seeing the worst death possible for me and they can oh, hardly right, right or do i just give off such a uh, such a weird energy that they are like oh my god this like they're very nervous around they're intimidated yeah 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 i don't know after i saw you on <laughs> unleash at that house of tarot card place like <laughs> I don't blame them, man. <laughs> they know you're going to ask for your money back. <clears throat> yeah. Riley, what do you got? Well, if you ever need to neutralize a psychic, send me in. <laughs> yeah, you're like psychic kryptonite. That's like, uh, <laughs> that's like, <laughs> like you'd, be, you'd be very skillful in a Philip K. Dick universe. You know what I mean? They would send you in there to like. Yeah, you're like a shield. Yeah, it's shield them from precog so they can like, you know, do some corporate espionage. Oh, God, I love that. <laughs> All right, here we go. This letter's titled Possible Dream Crossover. Oh, we are on a theme here. Uh, hi, guys. First off, thanks for making such a fun and engaging podcast. Each week, I eagerly wait for the next tale of High Strangeness to drop. Your podcast is one of the only ways I can tell it's Wednesday here in month whatever in quarantine. I mean, honestly, same. Uh... I don't know if dream weirdness falls under the paranormal or high strangeness categories per se, but this is something peculiar that I experienced that may be of interest to you. My grandpa died in April 2020. Don't worry, he was 97 and lived a long, happy life, and for a while afterwards, he would make cameo appearances in my dreams. The same thing happened when my grandma died years earlier, and I just chalked it up to my brain processing their passing each time. One night, I had a recurring stress dream where I had just missed or was about to miss a flight. Except this time, my grandparents were the ones driving me to the airport. Yeah, flights. Two days later, while talking on the phone with my uncle, I tell him about my recent airport-related dream and how both grandma and grandpa were present in it. That's when my uncle says something along the lines of, Oh, interesting, they were both in my dream two nights ago as well. They had just got back from traveling or were about to travel somewhere. Something to do with travel. Hmm. And then I joke, oh, maybe it's related. Maybe they were taking me to the airport, like a shared dream universe or a crossover episode. Well, I was mostly joking, a part of me likes the idea that there was some shared continuity between dreams. Who knows? Dreams are weird. What do you guys think? Just a coincidence? An actual shared parallel dream or something else entirely? Thanks for reading. Keep up the good work. Ian. Mm, there you go. Wow. Well, the subconscious is reaching out some way or some why to yeah. bring you a message. Who knows what that message is, though? This is the thing where it's like, <laughs> if it is a coincidence, it's a meaningful coincidence. And if it is a shared dream, then it is a shared dream. And at that point, what's the difference, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It really comes down to what it means to you and if that brought you more meaning. Because here's the thing. We'll never fucking know, Right. But I do think it's worth noting, as you did, uh, listener Ian. And uh, yeah, I mean, I say this is a this is what this is like as much of a like magical experience that you can naturally ask for, you know, or receive. Yeah. So just take all the meaning out of it that you can and don't worry too much about it. That's what I think. Yeah, that's great advice. I love that. I agree. Well put. Yeah. Kevin, we're waiting on your opinion over here. Oh, well, you said that was so beautiful. I don't oh. want to shit on it. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> there you go. But that's why you're here. <laughs> no, I yes. don't have anything ugly to say, but I just thought maybe not a surprise that you would have a travel dream when your your relatives have traveled 
from this world into the beyond. Like yeah. it seems like an easy leap that a lot of people might be dreaming about. Those people have traveled somewhere. So I don't totally. know if it's the same Great. as like a shared dream. That's that's a great point. I mean, but yeah, great point. And a good a good way to look at the metaphor for what uh, an airport might be in a dream is like a way to another life, you know. And again, yeah. it's even if it is a coincidence, it's still a meaningful one. So just g- yeah. get get all that get all the flight miles out of that as you, that that you can. Is what there I'll you say. Go. Earn it's your very points. Meaningful. The they train. love their family. It's awesome. Mm-hmm. I mean, as far as magic, it's along the lines of my uncle and I skipped dinner and then we both dreamed about food. Like (laughs) (laughs) fair. Um, all right, Kevin, why don't you kick into your next letter and boys, uh, and listeners, this will be on the Instagram. There's a photo reference for this story. So you might want to open up our Instagram and take a look at Bigfoot collectors club on Instagram. Uh, for reference to these photos that we're going to talk about. Right. Um, title, Touched by an Alien? Question mark. Hmm. Uh, hello, Riley, Bryce, Michael, and guest, if appropriate. That's Kevin. My na- mm. <laughs> That's right. Miss Janet, if you're nasty, I'm the guest, if you're appropriate. Um <laughs> <laughs> My name is Haley. I identif- she says she identifies as she, her. I think I was touched by an alien last night. For some background information, my bedspread is a velour. And this is where Kevin went night-night inside, but I'll keep reading. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so it shows handprints very well. But because a bedspread inherently moves a lot, the markings don't typically last a long time. Additionally, I wake up for work at 4.30 a.m. I live in the Northeast, so in December it's dark until roughly 7. My typical routine when I wake up is to go downstairs to wash my face and put my contacts on. I make my breakfast, usually just cereal and coffee, and then head back upstairs to eat in bed as to not wake up everyone and every dog in the house. I love this girl. Uh, I want to know how many dogs. I know. This morning I went back upstairs with my breakfast uh, and I noticed a handprint slash impression on my bedspread with huge fingers. It is facing in a manner where the owner was definitely standing along the side of the bed. The handprint couldn't have been made when I was getting out of bed because the angle would have meant that my wrist was broken. (laughs) (laughs) Additionally, (laughs) it was cold last night. Again, December in the Northeast. And I don't usually sleep with my arms and hands on top of the bed. The palm is seemingly of a normal size, but the fingers are very long. It's not like I put my hand down and my hand slipped as that would have made the palm print long as well. Sliding the other way is also seemingly not likely, as in placing your fingertips down, sliding back towards your body and planting the the palm. This is unlikely because the thumb is also super long. To make that kind of long thumb drag, it would have had to be like laying your hand flat and lifting your palm and dragging your fingertips together into a point. Also, you could see a distinct impression like there was even pressure into this fluffy material. So was I touched by an alien last night? I took a picture of just the handprint and then a picture of my hand next to the handprint for comparison. I have attached both pictures. I know I've probably convinced Bryce but Michael, can you disprove this? Also, awesome live score, Riley. Thanks for your thoughts, Haley. Wow. All right. Well, I'm looking well, at the you guys' right number. Here. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That's wild. And this, are you guys gonna post this picture on your? Yeah, on Instagram, so you can Sorry. look. If you're listening, you can you can look at it right now. Both both pictures. I mean, uh, you know, I'm the resident skeptic in this world, and like, but I will say that that does that is not 
that was not made by her hand. There's no way. Mm, no. I agree with all of her technical outlining. But like, there's just kind of not a way that was made by her hand. But maybe someone else sees Look it. Look how long the pinky finger indentation is on that thing. That is, yeah. that's yeah, what's that's weird to weird. me. And maybe it's aided by like a natural ripple in the blanket. Um, I guess my first question is why alien? Why are we going directly to alien? Because couldn't have this just as easily been a ghost mm. that 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 made an impression on 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 the bedspread? So, well, you know the answer to that. Usually, when we think about those aliens, those alien greys, they have those long, spindly fingers. You know, yes. And boy, that sure looks like well, that. It could have, but aliens also usually are depicted with three fingers and a thumb. This has four. Yeah, maybe this is like a long ghost. Yeah, could be. Riley, yeah. I don't. Why are the Why are the they different colors? These pictures. I think it's just the angle at which they 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 took them. You know what I mean? Uh, color. This is. I think this it's is just my, the don't even get me started because online shopping and like you're literally like looking at multiple pictures of the same sweater and you're like, what? The, which <laughs> yeah. fucking color is this in person? Is it green or is it purple? <laughs> this is like the blue the red blue is... gold thing, the dress thing. Riley, you I mentioned mean, hypercolor. Do you remember those? Those were bad. Oh yeah. Oh man, that's funny. That just pulled. It came out of my subconscious. Yeah. But yes, I loved those shirts. Well, now, You're how did they the work? Did, yeah. Changing? Oh, that's right. They so the temperature would change the color of the of of the material. Kevin, uh, do you see like how easily distracted and, these men are? The neon blue. <laughs> see how I do. We're trying. We're, we we have a photo of a potential alien oh, right, right. or ghost <laughs> handprint, and <laughs> Bryce. <laughs> Who is just off and running about hypercolor sweaters from? That's a very Hawaii 20... thing to bring up. <laughs> island right? time, dude. You're on island yeah. time. We need to get you back here. <laughs> Focus back in, Bryce. Well, uh, I, I think alien hand. I think it is relevant to say that I just recently bought a sweatshirt online, and on <laughs> in the pictures online, it looked like kind of a rosy color, and I actually called us one of the the in person stores. And they said it was more of a grayish purple. And then when it arrived, it was taupe. <laughs> <laughs> Who describes anything as a grayish purple? That's like something I would not buy. Uh, I mean, one of one of the, the army men at store. I was going to say the girl at that store, or one of the soldiers at RAAF uh, when they were uncovering the bodies, crashed at Roswell. Um, uh. I I'm going with ghost. I'm going with spirit handprint on this one. If not. Just a completely crazy coincidental blanket ripple that looks like a hand. What about oh, man? Those look like fingers. Though, really I know. Do. I'm just saying. Uh, I'm going. I'm going ghost first. Crazy coincidental uh, wrinkle next. I don't. I'm not feeling alien from this one. I'm sorry. Could be a Bigfoot hand. Ghost, Could be ghosted Bigfoot hand. Shadow person, maybe? Yeah. yeah. Like shadow shadow I'm, person. I'm thinking interdimensional ghost <laughs> entity thing, so I don't know. It's maybe, terrifying. Maybe get it saged, Haley. <laughs> get it all saged. Take a plaster cast of it if you can. If the wrinkle... Yeah, that would have plaster been nothing cast. to do. If the wrinkle's still your there. Microfiber. Your velour uh, <laughs> yeah, bed cover. You're, you're going to yeah. lose your velour bed cover, but it'll be worth it. It's for science. Oh, worth. my God. <laughs> maybe that really nasty um bedspread saved your life like that 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 demon took one touch and was like no nah. <laughs> <laughs> well Haley, uh you you've been served i guess if that... <laughs> Haley, don't listen to me i'm a bitch but <laughs> i don't like sleeping on things that are fuzzy and i know that's probably just me so I apologize. I, I mean, thankfully it is because otherwise, I mean, this is the thing that we should all be really honestly asking ourselves. If we all slept with fuzzier blankets, would we see more ghost or alien handprints in them? And when, when we wake up in the morning, that's yeah. the thing that this is a good interdimensional entity detector. And Haley, write us back in. If anything else weird happens, I think it's a ghost. All right, there you go. Moving on. Riley. What do you got in the bag there? All right. New listener with a black-eyed kid story. Hey, everyone. 
I'm a new listener who learned about the podcast from the Doughboys' recent appearances and went back and found some other funny people I really like. Jordan Morris, Gabris, Betsy Sidaro. Please say we're getting another Christmas episode. You know we got you already. Mm -hmm. Uh, Anyway, I was going back through the archive to find some stuff that really intrigued me, and I listened to Black Eyed Kids. And hearing the description of the Black Eyed Kids, I was instantly transported back to my encounter with them. Oh, Ah, shit. We triggered this. All right. It was Halloween, 2014. And I'd fallen asleep on my parents' couch. And at some point, I remember being awoken in the middle of the night and looking out the back window above their couch. I peered out over her backyard and deck and saw three people huddled directly under her window, all wearing hoodies. Jesus. I don't remember how long I looked at them for. Uh, Oh, sorry. I don't remember how long I looked at them for. Trying to figure out what they were doing outside the window when simultaneously all three of them looked up at me and I remember their black eyes and being struck with a paralyzing sense of dread. (laughs) I fell backwards on the couch and eventually the fear subsided and I fell back asleep. I'd always kind of written this off as a weird experience, but when it was mentioned on the episode that the children are often seen wearing hooded sweatshirts, it all clicked and I knew that what I had seen had been real. As far as I know, nothing like this has happened before or since, but it has struck with me for six years now. Anyway, I got a couple more stories. One about a UFO over Des Moines, Iowa. It's not very exciting. And a couple involving Morningside <laughs> College in Sioux City, Iowa. Oh, shit. Hi, yeah, Sioux City, Morningside. I know that area. Uh, but I don't know the protocol for multiple stories in one email, so I'll just leave you with that one for now. Thanks, Jay. Write us back. Let us know the other yeah, ones. Send them yeah, on Jay, in. there's no real in. protocol, as you'll see in the next letter. But, um... I love that we got a black eyed kid story. I yes. think this is a first for BCC. Now I got to ask Kevin, um, are you familiar at all with the black eyed kids phenomenon? I like that one song. Um... <laughs> Thank you for saying that. <laughs> that's all I could picture while I'm reading that, uh, reading this letter is like Fergie, like in yeah, a hoodie. Fergie's just like in a hoodie. <laughs> yeah. Will I am? Yeah, yeah yep. dude, they got a new jam with Shakira. Um, I, it's pumping. <laughs> I, <laughs> island time, Bryce. Just let enjoy the time on the island, Bryce. Just enjoy <laughs> your time on the island. I am <laughs> not familiar can. with Black Eyed Kids. I'm not familiar. So this is a thing that's uh, seems to be based in some real encounters, but got. It seems like people jumped on it on the internet and wrote fictional stories about them. These are these weird child entities that have that often show up at your door asking to come in or the if you're like hanging out in a parking lot like eating a like a, a like beef gordito supreme or a crunch wrap supreme and a Taco Bell late at night shame eating in your car they might walk up to your car and tap on your window and they're like elementary school age kids wearing hoodies with pale skin and they have solid black eyes yeah not and they're cool. very aggressive of like give us a ride or let us in and it's supposed to be a very God. unnerving scary experience oh really <laughs> <laughs> you don't say yeah <laughs> Man. Oh my god! So this Jeez. is cool because this is this is nice because a lot of those when we did the episode we were like how many of these are like real and how much of this is just creepy pasta yeah on on Reddit you know so it's cool yeah. that we have somebody who's like oh fuck I saw this yeah you know totally and look it could be sort of that tulpa phenomenon if enough enough people are aware of it and think about it and and believe in it it could actually you know come into existence or it could be the phenomenon. Uh, which I use as an umbrella term for all things strange, could be manifesting itself as those types of entities. Uh, who knows? You know, but this, I, I believe this, your story, man, and I believe it was not human. Whatever the fuck this, you saw, this hooded entity thing is like it's a thing. It's weird. You know, uh, one of my early memories as a kid was I remember waking up one night and thinking that I saw the hand of a Jawa outside my window Oh, and like reaching up at the glass. And I, you know, this could have been one of my early night terrors thing. And I remember crying and then my mom came downstairs. I was like three years old, like three and a half. And she was rocking me in the rocking chair in the living room. And I could see out the back doors to the, cause my, my bedroom was on the ground floor and I could see out the back French doors to the back deck and and to the window of my bedroom through that. 
and I swore that I saw two hooded entities that I thought were Jawas from Star Wars laughing to one another that they had just scared me. Wow. No, thank you. And, you know, I remember just, but I was comforted that like, well, my mom's here, so it's okay. But I was like, there they are laughing at me. And, you know, maybe they were plants, maybe it was something else, but it's weird that if, you know, that my brain, even at that young age, was thinking of like hooded little entities as a thing that might come get you, you know? So this might be another collective unconsciousness sort of thing where you wake up and you might see these and maybe they're not really there. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it has. It's, it was also Halloween, so good. No, it's true. But I like where you're going with that. I mean, yeah, maybe it's some sort of... Uh, this is a shared you know, experience that, thing. Yeah, yeah, that comes... Uh, mm. Especially in, it, when you're sort of close to the dream state. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe it's sort of a subconscious thing. Who knows? I don't know. Kevin? I do. I, am I still choosing between believe it or bullshit? I don't know. Yeah, I, whatever you're just wanting to know your reactions. Or well, I call, I call bullshit on this one. Well, bullshit in the sense that it may not be a real thing, but they probably saw, they think they saw this, well, right? I I believe this person is exaggerating. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Jay, don't I can throw shade at your BCC boys. I can say that because I'm just a guest and people can hate me and they can still love you. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, some of our guests have experienced that. And I would like to say to our listeners, go a little easier on our guests on Instagram, please. Yeah, we love that. Uh, but go on. Um, no, no. All I'm going to say is I just suddenly, well, it's pointless. But listen, what... <laughs> This is when I'm. This is activates the skeptic in me because it's such a real, it's such a potentially real thing. When someone says, "I looked out my window and I saw three hooded, three people in hoodies," so, like, if there is, yes, okay, assuming it could be otherworldly, there's also a chance it's three people in hoodies because that happens in our world. Yeah. And like mm-hmm. the fact that your reaction to that is to immediately fall backwards and go to sleep is like that's the last thing I would do. There would bang on the window, uh, engage them, call nine one one, hide. Like there's a bunch of things I would do. Fly away in a hot air balloon. People. Well, why do you say, immediately go to say sleep? he went to sleep? Did he say he went to sleep or just fell backwards? He said he, he fell says, backwards and then went to sleep. He oh. says I remember their black eyes and being struck with a paralyzing sense of dread. I fell backwards onto the couch and eventually the fear subsided and I fell back asleep. So oh, this, this just fell backwards this, from the site. This sounds like, you know, your sort of alien or vampire experience where he's like getting glamored. And then, you know, they're like, oh. you sit back down, sit back oh. down. You're not supposed to see us. And then they're like sort paralyzed. Of hypnotized. Is the key yes. Word. Like hypnotized back to sleep. Gla- I, okay. I like I like the, I like that word and glamored. He, that, that, and he that said, "T-shirt, you just got glamored, bro." Well, that's that's a true blood thing. Oh. But he says, "I'd always kind of written this off as a weird experience, but when it was mentioned on the episode that the children are often seen wearing hooded sweatshirts, it all clicked." Yeah, and then I knew what I'd seen. It so basically, he kind of wrote this off, and then when he heard that this was a thing, it justified him and went, "Oh, maybe this was all real." You know what I mean? So it's a weird thing. It's, it's weird. weird. It's a weird thing. Why would you not first think there are people in my yard? Why wouldn't that be the first thought? Unless you were glamorized. I mean, unless yeah, unless you were like hit, like weirdly. Yeah. They had those weird opaque onyx <clears throat> eyes that aren't supposed to exist those on human onyx beings. Eyes. All right. Well, we have one more uh, L file to read. Uh, this is a longi. This is one of our long ones. Okay. And I've asked Bryce to read this tonight. Great. Uh, so I want everyone to settle in. If you need to make yourself another drink or let the cat out to pee. <laughs> <laughs> let the cat out to pee. Yeah. Okay. Who's, who's going to Oh, you mean the listener? Yeah. If you're a listener at home and you want to let your cat outside to pee, um, take a brief break. We're going to, we're just going to roll right into it. Hit pause and come back. Cause we got a good, we got, we got a big one for you. Well, let's jump right in then. Here we go. This one is called A Cryptid Encounter While Camping and Meeting a Siren. Hey Bryce, Michael, and Riley. Big fan of the podcast. 
The quarantine has kept me from hanging with my buddies and talking about paranormal stuff, so listening to you guys has been a real treat. You guys are really expanding my mind and I've had such a blast listening. I have two stories that you guys might enjoy. A bit of prologue. I'm a relatively sensitive guy. I've had the full battery of paranormal experiences. Near-death experiences, haunted house, alien visit, precog dreams, tarot card weirdness, you name it. High strangeness is nothing new for me. Part of what I enjoy about the pod is hearing all your theories about how strangeness presents itself to us, usually using a frame of reference humans can comprehend, like mythology. I fully agree, and this idea comes into play in my personal paranormal stories. My first story happened just this past August, while a few friends and I were camping for the weekend in a state park. The park is Mammoth Deciduous Forest, just near the Mississippi River, and features large blocks... A blood. Mammoth Deciduous Forest. Yes, A Mammoth Deciduous Forest, just near the Mississippi River. I get one letter wrong on a... I'm sorry, no, I just want to... Come on. Get well, just because there's, there's, like, Mammoth National <laughs> Park, isn't there? I just wanted to make sure that uh, we... Yeah. I'll, it's not not to be confused with capital M. No, 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 no. You're right. I'll watch my P's and Q's. Sorry to jump on. I'm Here just saying. And your A's. It's a well-written and letter. A's. It's a well-written <laughs> letter. My parents used to fight all the time. <laughs> <laughs> this particular state park is also historically known as a trail that was used by indigenous tribes and traders throughout history. I was going with a good buddy and his friends, and we had planned to do a lot of hiking, watch a meteor shower, and also eat some mushrooms. On the drive up, I jokingly remarked that we'd be so in tune with nature, we'd probably see the forest spirit. My friend and I are big fans of Miyazaki. Miyazaki. Didn't Miyazaki. even let me try it. Didn't even He's, let He misspelled me. it. Now he, now I'm calling out the I'm calling out the, the writer in her. Uh, it's Miyazaki. Miyazaki. And had just watched one of the features, uh, one that features a forest spirit, which takes on the form of, among other things, a large deer, Princess Mononoke. Okay, so basically now I'm worried that I'm going to get yelled at for mispronouncing Miyazaki, so maybe it's Miyazaki. I apologize. Wait, you guys, it's Miyazaki, and you haven't seen Princess Mononoke? I have, countless times. I love Princess Mononoke. It's fucking badass. Okay, we got a a long way to get through. Here we go. go. Come on. On the first night we arrived, we we were all a bit tired from setting up camp once nightfall hit. Our campsite, was, our campsite was deep Dude, in the I'm park. Dude, I'm here for Totoro. I'll say that. <laughs> Cap us. Sorry. Come on. Sorry, Brad. The last campsite before the trail starts. So it was nice and secluded. The buddy I was sharing a tent with turned, around, uh, turned in around 10.30 p.m., but my head really started to hurt. I started to feel a cluster headache come on, and these usually precede some strangeness. At the time, however, I figured I was just dehydrated, so I chugged some water and sparked a joint to help ease my temple-pounding headache as midnight approached. Good call. As I chilled near the dimly glowing campfire, head craned skyward watching the Persades uh, streak overhead, I was shaken when I heard large rustling in the brush near the campsite. Instantly, my headache went away and I felt suddenly nervous, like I was being watched. I put out the fire and scurried to my tent. As I lay in my sleeping bag trying to go to sleep, my eyes snap open when I hear massive footsteps outside my tent. Damn. I can't move, and I can't see a thing outside because my tent is sealed up. I try to remain calm and study the creature's behavior. The first thing I recognize is the movement it's making around my tent. The creature has hooves. I can hear the distinct sound of a small surface area striking the ground. It sounds just like a moose. My family lived in Alaska for a time, so I'm a bit familiar with what they sound like. Its breathing was also very loud, like a moose or bear. I was perplexed, because the largest animal found in this state park were deer. As I tried to piece together what it could be, a random thought appeared in my mind, disrupting my train of thought. Quote, This one manifestation of the forest. This is one manifestation of the forest. The thought hit me hard. That's the best way I can describe it. It felt like I got gut punched. I started coughing and heard the creature move just a bit as if it perked up. Then, without any movement at all, it was gone. I checked outside my tent and there was nothing but the still night air. The following day, we went on a few long hikes and did indeed eat the mushrooms. On our last hike through the main trail, we approached the forest very reverently. It sounds very cliche, but we were giving off some very good vibes. 
Nobody brought phones. Looking back, probably not the smartest idea. We took extra time to admire the very old trees we came across and were overall very friendly and jovial. On our way back to our campsite, for roughly the last mile of our hike, a bird walked and flew beside us. At first, we thought it was injured and we attempted to see if it needed help. We tried to give it water and some granola after it had been on our hiking guide. After it had been our hiking guide for about a half only mile. Only campers on shrooms would try to give water and yeah. a granola bar you to a bird. You want granola, little buddy? <laughs> you want granola? <laughs> Take it. Come on, man. Have some of this kind bar, bro. Dude, birds don't eat granola. What are you stupid? What are you talking? Of course they do. Wait, they're not drunk. They're high on mushrooms. So jeez. Um, anyway, it would let us walk a bit in front, then fly right behind between our group and land on a shoulder or a shoe and go for a ride. He looked to be a happy little fellow, and I've never seen a wild bird interact so closely with humans before. As we reached the clearing that marked the exit of the trail, the bird stopped at the threshold of the forest, chirped merrily, and glided off back into the forest. We couldn't believe our little bird friend that hung around for so long. But I think both the bird and the cryptid I encountered may be one and the same. I think both are manifestations or under the influence of the spirit intelligence of the old forest. It may, sa- it may sound hippy-dippy, but I think the forest may have wanted to check us out on the first night. and took the form of a large deer of sorts, which is my go-to mental picture of the forest spirit. Because I was the only one awake to perceive it. I think our bird friend was a helper the forest sent after determining we were peaceful, respectful, and was helping to guide us back to camp safely. I hear you laughing over there, Kevin. The forest knowing we were a bit fucked up from the shrooms. And that's the end of his first story. He has another one. Did you guys want to jump in on that one? I said we'd just talk about it when when it's all done. Don't don't stop. Moving on. My next story is truly bonkers and takes place at a concert. In February of 2013, <laughs> I went to go see a concert. I was also eating drugs. <laughs> <laughs> I went to go see a concert with my buddies. Unfortunately, at the time, I'd broken my leg, so I was worried I'd miss out on seeing one of my favorite bands. Luckily, the venue had a special area where I could God, What sit. band was it? I, I want to know. know. So I was going to say like 311, just because why not? Uh, In 2013? <laughs> I hope not. Yeah, dude. Ska band, bro. Ah! Uh, luckily the venue had a special area where I could sit and enjoy the show but I'd be separated from my friends during the concert seeing as I had a fully broken leg I wasn't planning on getting really rowdy probably just a beer or two and some puffs of the old one hitter I snuck in as I get situated in my seat a young woman, her friend and their very tall male friend came and sat next to me in the seating area I noticed none of them had crutches but figured they must know the band or something As we waited for the next show to start, I hadn't given this group much attention, but as the lights went down and the band started to take the stage, the woman closest to me tapped me on the shoulder and asked if she could place her backpack near my area. I was focused on the stage, so I began to answer her before looking at her. I was planning to ask how she got a backpack into this venue, because they weren't allowed. But when I turned to meet her gaze, I was truly beguiled. Long blonde hair model-esque figure wearing a flowing bohemian white sundress. I've never seen a woman so attractive. My mouth dried up. I felt insanely small and lame and I wanted to impress this woman so bad. Her eyes looked to me like they were glittering. This may not seem super strange, but you guys have to understand I'm very gay. I've been in more bear (laughs) beds. I've been in more bear beds than Goldilocks. Oh my god. (laughs) This is the first. <laughs> I just want to interrupt and say, please, listener, write a memoir because <laughs> this letter is so fun. This is the first and only time I've ever felt this way about a woman. I was so confused. I could tell I looked visibly shocked, and she chuckled, knowingly glanced at her friend, and again asked about her backpack. I answered in the affirmative, meekly, and faced the stage. As my mind tried to grapple with my apparent newly formed heterosexuality, I couldn't help but notice that the woman's backpack was surprisingly utilitarian looking for such a hippie woman. The band was fully jamming, but I was still so genuinely upset. I literally 
just came out to all my buddies this past year. I was so deep in thought that I almost didn't notice that she was staring at me the entire time. Eyes laser focused on me. Her female friend seemed to be talking directly to the tall guy they were with while he remained stone-faced and unresponsive. I looked her way and smiled very awkwardly. Each time I looked at her, I felt like I needed her to like me. Everything depended on it. I started packing my one-hitter and offered it to her and her friends. The blonde woman partook, but her two friends did not. As the start of the second set began, she asked me to grab her backpack. She fished around in it and found a pipe and started loading it up. Oh my god, this makes me want weed so bad. Among her group, she alone smoked from her pipe. I remember the smell was terrible. I figured she must have some legitimately garbage weed, despite how gross her weed smelled when she offered it to me. I, of course, had to say yes. Upon taking the hit, I knew instantly, this is DMT. Oh, shit! I had done DMT a few years prior and had a great time. Floated out of my body. Of course you did, listener. Infinitely large and microscopic at the same time. And finally, was able to watch myself. Watch myself as my consciousness grew to envelop all of the universe. Needless to say, I was a bit surprised at this revelation. But I tried to keep cool because I wanted to seem cool to this woman. As the wave started to crash against my psyche, I could feel this time was different. This was way more intense. If you can believe it, in the brief moments of lucidity I had left, I recalled that the song that was currently being performed was the exact song I had been listening to years prior when I first did EMT. This fact suddenly intensified my feeling that something was amiss. I thrust the pipe back in her hand and instinctively wanted to run, but remember, my leg is broken. As my consciousness starts to spill out into other dimensions, she grabs my shoulder and whispers in my ear, It's okay, Brian. You don't have to travel far if you don't want to. No sooner than she stops talking, complete silence. Then a burst of colored lights. I can hear the concert, but it's very distorted. I can hear a woman singing, but the band doesn't have a vocalist. I try to focus on the ethereal singing, and the lights stop, and there's silence again. The entire concert has stopped, like time is standing still completely. I'm outside my body, and she's outside hers, and she's truly radiant, glowing a brilliant deep purple indigo. The crowd is silent, people in mid-jump bopping to the music suspended in the air, but the crowd's collective aura is shining so bright, bright yellows and warm blues coalesce together and form a deluge of energy in the room. I can feel their jubilation. It feels like a million birthdays at once. The fear that I had melted away, and even though this woman, or entity, was objectively more beautiful in this state, my attraction was gone. I looked at her puzzled and she seems shocked that I can see and acknowledge her. My mental faculties continued to return to me as I started to return to my body. When I came to, she was fully conscious, standing behind me with her hands draped around my shoulders, clutching tightly. I could now feel that something very strange was happening. Panicking, I turned to her and exclaimed, I'm gay! (laughs) Her once gorgeous face contorted in anger. She leans in, face close to mine, and whispers venomously, You've wasted my time. And then her eyes start to glitter again. That's when I completely black out. I have no memory of most of the second set. No memory of meeting back up with my friends. No recollection of us all taking a photo together after the show where I was sitting. With the woman and her friends nowhere to be seen. My buddies told me the next day, that they were surprised I got so shit-faced after saying I wasn't planning on raging. <laughs> I, I mean, apparently... <laughs> the guy did say he was going to take it easy yeah, and yeah. then smoked DMT in Yeah, public. but he, he didn't know it was DMT. <laughs> I apparently was incoherent the rest of the evening. This was strange because I hadn't left my seat to get Fuck. any beer. I actually didn't remember a fair amount about my interaction with this siren at first. But memories kept getting uncovered while I meditated. I'm still very creeped out by how she knew my name or why I even felt so attracted to her in the first place. 
Seriously, imagine it out of nowhere. It feels like your orientation changes suddenly. I'm glad that whatever she gave me inadvertently gave me back some of my agency. Like most high strangeness, I think we're dealing with some interdimensional <laughs> play here. I find it interesting that whatever this was took a form so reminiscent of a siren as a guy that often thinks about scenarios in which I am up against a mythical, fictional being. I usually imagine that as a gay dude, I'd be impervious to a siren's abilities. Now, I'm not so sure. Let's hope that sirens can't take the form of a hunky guy because then I'm in trouble. <laughs> Thank you so much for reading these weird stories. I literally have tons of them. You guys are the best. Keep up the great work. <laughs> Riley, Spindrift is truly righteous. Yes. Dearly, right on. Brian. Brian. Oh, my oh. God, dude. What a lot of spirit dude. guide. <laughs> that was like Hunter S. Thompson. That was yeah. Like, well really done. Something. Well done. Kevin, we'll, we'll, we'll let you go first on this one, buddy. <laughs> oh, God. I mean, what, I don't know what to say. The guy's just describing like a drug experience. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I think I he think wrote you the wrong show. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I think on, at, at first glance, yes, 100%. But I get, I have to say, I get where he's coming from. Look, yeah. I have yeah. definitely had experiences where I really feel at one with nature. I get the eerie. Like, maybe it was a moose. Maybe it was a deer that came by. I don't know. He wasn't on shrooms when that happened i totally get what he's talking about i think that i relate to this in a very personal way where like i'm very good and i'm not saying you know he didn't encounter some interdimensional beings but i'm very good at personally mythologizing uh my experiences Mm. out in the world interesting right and this is sort of like for me This is sort of like the shared dream thing where it's like, I don't know if you're necessarily uh, experiencing anything from interdimensional, but you were the drugs or at least your mindset naturally. And we'd love to hear other stories uh, seems to tune in with the symbolic meaning of the world around you. Mm. And I think that's a really fucking cool way to experience the world. You know, yeah, yeah like I, I would the, agree. to the point to the point where, like, does it matter if the bird and the thing outside your tent was in a literal nature spirit or not? No, because that's how you experienced it. And it brought you meaning. Does it matter if this woman was a literal siren, you know, a uh, mythological siren or not? No, because that's how you experienced that interaction as a living symbol, right? And by the way, also just a reminder, I mean, you know, I'm I'm sure you are perfectly comfortable in your sexuality and I'm not questioning that at all, but you know, sexuality is a sliding scale. Sometimes you'll you'll meet somebody that throws you in in for a loop. I, you know what I, I mean? Elvis, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Especially any version just chow down on some DMT. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You'll just jump in that fucking flying golden UFO and go to fuck town. <laughs> I love this story. I just want to say I love these stories. I totally get where this uh, listener is coming from. I'm not sure if this is literal high strangeness or not. This is very, but there's so much like occult thinking in like the best way possible in both of these stories. And I say, run with it and experience the world that way. Amen. That it's was, high that was strangeness. Good. Yeah, it's high, <laughs> high strangeness. It's high strangeness. Yeah, that's true. Subtle distinction. Yeah. Uh, I think that was very well said, Michael. I mean, you know, I would agree and maybe deviate just a tiny bit. It sounds like this guy is, uh, you know, very in tune with uh, the phenomenon and and high strangeness. So perhaps, you know, it could be reaching out to him in various ways and, and uh, you know, Things like mushrooms and DMT are just agents, you know, to, uh, you know, and they don't work that way for everybody, you know, but it, I don't know, perhaps it could have uh, used those as a, as a way oh. to really sort of trip you up and engage with you as well. Uh, I remember a paradox behind, you know, like I remember seeing a drugs or, you know, 
I remember seeing a Dinosaur Jr. concert in Milwaukee, and like, I might have been a little stoned, might have definitely had a few beers, but I was like, in the middle of that set, I was just like, full on visioning this fucking giant golden fucking eagle. You know what I mean? <laughs> And it was just like left such an impression on me. I was like, dude, I feel like they channeled a giant fucking golden eagle. (laughs) You know what I mean? And like, that's what it was about. You know, who cares if there was literally a giant golden eagle hovering over the stage? You know, that it's it's sort of like brought meaning to that experience. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I would 100% hang out with Brian. This guy, I think, should write a memoir about his experiences they're very very well written letter and very entertaining yeah thank you i mean as somebody who doesn't do drugs really um I'll, I'll, like, by, the, I, by the way me too <laughs> for as much as we talk about it yeah me i've too. never i've done mushrooms n- never done dmt but uh, i'll let you finish your thought kevin go ahead well, i was just gonna say like well you guys you know have had some experiences the golden thing that michael saw and what, but it's like I've also real talk sat in a car with very sober with a guy I had met at a club. This is, I mean, I'm I'm in my twenties when I'm experiencing this and he's like got my hand and he won't stop like rubbing his fingers over my pointer fingers, fingernail and talking about it and how smooth it is and how crazy it is like the shape of it. So like he was going on and I thought this guy, at first I was like, he's so like into me. This is crazy. Like every little speck of me. And then, and then I slowly realized, Oh, he's on ecstasy. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I see. Yeah. So like, do I think that his slight drug use took him closer to what is a paranormal thing, which lives on my finger? No. I think that he was fucked up and he thought yeah. a very normal, unparanormal thing was beyond magic. Like well, that guy probably still, and you know what? He will, you will get a letter about my pointer finger. I guarantee you. <laughs> like it's coming. Kevin, it's a and beautiful by the way. Finger. My fingers are very normal looking. <laughs> I was going to say they're beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Also they're just, pre- they're drugged up predators out there. Of course. Well, and I, you know, I just want to I just want to say to maybe to help bring it even full circle to, uh, you know, DMT, our bodies produce uh, androgynously. Uh, in other words, all of our organs produce DMT and especially a, a certain gland in our brain. So we all have dimethyltryptamine in our bodies. Our body produces it. And and the science is still pretty out on that. But some of the great works by like Dr. Rick Strassman, who studied it, called, wrote a book called The Spirit Molecule, said that, uh, you know, it's released at birth and at death and possibly during REM sleep. So even though you've never done DMT, Kevin, there's a good chance you've probably experienced, uh, you know, what DMT has to offer, you know, in deep REM sleep. You know, and there's also there's also studies out that that say that, you know, certain individuals can spontaneously release DMT and get triggered into an alter state of consciousness out of the fucking blue. Uh, I, I think I might have even, you know, <laughs> have that happen to me once or twice. But uh, but so, yeah, just because you haven't done DMT doesn't mean you, you know, you haven't experienced the likes of it. So uh, very interesting. OK. okay. Interesting. I just need to live with Bryce for like a year and and he'll slowly <laughs> melt away my crustiness with his knowledge. Yeah. I would a hundred percent support this life decision. Um, okay. I have one more. It's not an L file, but it's something that a, uh, a listener wrote in. It's brief. Riley, I want to look to you. Should we pause and reload? Because we're at an hour. No, we should, I think okay. we should just yeah, pause because okay. we stopped. It was Might want to mark this if we want to cut this out. I don't know. Anyway, I just wanted to read this. This was sent in by uh, Susan, who is a pat- patron over at Bigfoot uh, Collectors Club, The Other Side. She wrote a poem called Ode to the BCC. Michael, Bryce, Riley, all three set out adventuring amidst dirt, rock, and tree. Armed with tales of monsters and aliens so epic, which had sadly been scoffed by multiple skeptics. (laughs) Insignificant, said Michael, the designated director, 
Pay no heed to the humdrum hecklers. Riley, the musician, composed a sweet tune. It features Club Bryce, and you can find it on iTunes. <laughs> Mr. Bryce Johnson, with his impressionistic voices, has been diligently documenting, documenting strange, scary noises. On the boys foraged for a more amicable audience, one that might listen, have more tolerance. Through sunset and vine and valleys they traversed till they found a deep canyon where they could rehearse. There they met others with the same curiosity that weekly tuned in to their fantastic frequency. Guests range from doubters to like-minded awestruck, though once they had Scott Adsit, that guy, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> the witch and the median haunt them often, who believe there is much more beyond the coffin. Godmother Jen Kirkman told tale of her ghost when she was terribly lonely on the East Coast. Author Linda S. Godfrey, whom they highly regard, confirmed creepy cryptids in America's backyard. Even Joe Maganello got on the spooky wagon when he opened up the world of Dungeons & Dragons. They bonded with silly sisters who shared their funny feelings. To all of their listeners, it was truly revealing. You see, there are others who needed something more, who feel the human existence can be such a bore. Without belly laughter and music and stories, we'd all feel like mice stuck in a laboratory. So raise your glass or flying saucer, be you flesh, spirit, or even skinwalker. To Michael, Bryce, and Riley, we hold you in great affection. May we all meet up in the next dimension. Here, here. Cheers. Well done, Susan. Well done. Thank you beautiful. so much. <clears throat> and a beautiful way to kick off wow. the new year. The um, new year. I've never been part of an ode before. I know. Wow. I feel wow, like we're all in Valhalla. Uh, I want to thank Kevin Kirkpatrick. My God, Kevin, it was so good to have you back on the show. Dude. We, it's you, you really were here at the beginning in the middle and what hopefully is not the end um <laughs> you you are uh, a, a good friend and a, and a dear guest here on the bcc uh we don't know where to find bigfoot but where can people find you kevy we love you gay gay i don't have an answer for where you can find me because no I'm instagram invisible now what do you mean you don't wow. have an instagram I do have an Instagram, but you know what? I'm I was thinking about leaving because one of my really good friends who I really kind of thinks cool. You know, you have those friends here, like yeah. I do what they do, mm -hmm. and <laughs> that this friend she was like, I think I'm gonna go off social media, and I was like, yes, but I yeah. probably won't. Oh, but, you're so but, funny on Instagram. Really? Oh well, yes. thanks. I don't even I don't even try to be funny on it. Well, your um, interior decorator stuff is very good. Yeah, I may have not oh, done it. Old. Well, but I got to get back to trying to be funny. I think I'm was, six of my dogs now. Truly funny. <laughs> well, where can they? What is your Instagram handle currently? If it doesn't exist, they'll they'll figure that out. Okay. Um, it is. <laughs> I don't I know. Kevin. I think. Oh, I think it's <laughs> the Kevin Kirkpatrick. Yeah, that's it. We'll tag you. <laughs> Guess what? You'll be tagged in these episodes anyway. I think it's even better. Ready. And you know what? I am about to move to Amsterdam, and so maybe my Instagram will get really interesting. Oh shit! Oh. You're moving to Amsterdam? I am for a little bit. Yeah, I'm gonna gonna Mike. Mike got a job and or a uh, a new job with his same company and. And we're gonna just get like go oh my. be crazy and oh. and live there for a little bit anyway. I'm excited so for cool. you. Sounds There's like your of... New Year's resolutions are already coming true. That's amazing. That's yes, uh, yeah. <laughs> so so follow my journey, will you, on Instagram? Yes, please. and we'll have fun waking you up to record an episode with us at 1 a.m. Yeah, your time. We're gonna need you back. <laughs> on Done deal. Okay, good. Um, well, you can follow us on Instagram at, at Bigfoot Collectors Club or on Twitter at Bigfoot Pod. Subscribe to the other side, patreon.com slash Bigfoot Collectors Club. Boys, my boys, my sweet Bigfoot New Year's boys, do you have anything you want to remind your viewers uh, to check out? Your listeners, sorry, our listeners. Watch season two, Expedition Bigfoot, only on yes! the Travel Channel. First time we've plugged it on the show. It should be airing, I think it debuted like 
This is on January 6th, so it debuted either last Sunday or next Sunday. Yeah, de- the, the pre-show debuted on the January 3rd, uh, right. which is a, I'm looking at my calendar, Sundays, Sundays at 9. Boom. Yes. See that. So you, it was last Sunday. You can probably catch it on a rerun if you missed it, and then tune in for every Sunday after that. And and you mentioned on the uh, Patreon uh, last month that uh, there are 12 episodes this season. Yes, 12 episodes Fuck. and uh, and a pre-show oh. and a post-show. So, yes. Thank oh, you. And yeah. where it's already airing at this point. Can you tell us where you are looking for Bigfoot this season? Yeah, we are in southeastern Kentucky, the Appalachians. What? Yes. Whoa. Yes. I didn't ever. God, that I love be like- that. I didn't peg it to be a big Southern. Bigfoot area. Oh, it's a huge Bigfoot area. Absolutely. I mean, those app that Appalachian Mountain region is just flush with dense wilderness and rolling hills and high strangeness. I mean, it is the the yes. locals will tell you. I mean, down there is where you get the goblins, where you get the Mothmen, where you get the Black Bigfoot. Hills. Those Black Hills, man. It's it's wild. So uh, obviously, needless to say, we had a pretty crazy time down there wild i can't wait i'm so excited to watch uh we'll have to talk about we'll have to do some uh tv clubs about uh the new season over on the other side yeah would love to Uh, and of course we'll talk about it right here on the main feed as well uh riley you got a new album coming out soon don't you my friend yeah you can pre-order it at alternative tentacles.com label putting it out new spindrift album yeah classic soundtracks volume three and like brian i've been uh, sorry to jump in i've been listening to spindrift a lot lately dude you guys just fucking oh right on yeah what a sound man (laughs) it's a great combo with hawaii and uh we got nice Bryce, we have a song called Paniolos. It's the it's a Hawaiian cowboy song. Oh, so no listen way. to that. Oh, I bet I've already. Heard <laughs> oh my that. god, Paniolos. That is amazing. Uh, listeners, please do us a favor. Give us a five star review on Apple Podcasts. It helps us get the show to more people. Uh, and if you do, we might read it on the show, like this one from Jack Lundoodle, who wrote "Peaches Five Stars, More Peaches." <laughs> Great. that's all i gotta write and maybe Perfect you, review. that might be like a weird internet thing that i don't know about but uh oh, you take. what you started that what you started peaches you said even if you just leave a, a comment and say peaches my god you're right i forget Damn, thank man. god I, jack I it was my own weird internet thing thank you <laughs> yeah. yeah that's wow. all you gotta write it's just peaches fantastic i completely <laughs> forgot i said literally i was googling peaches internet meme <laughs> like i was trying to make sure that i didn't i couldn't i came up with a controversial tiktok star and then i was like well peaches is lowercase this isn't uh i don't know what's happening here um well thanks so much oh. guys jack uh thank you for your review kevin thank you for being a guest on the show i gave him equal plugging to you kevin i enjoy that uh we love you kevy you're welcome back anytime we'll miss you when you're in i Amsterdam. love you guys too thank you for having um, me thank you you thank know you. that i'm Our gonna friend. come over to the netherlands at some point and you guys we're gonna have to like look up some weird um amsterdam cryptids together and um i hope all of you come and visit man it would be here here fantastic all right everybody uh we'll see the rest of you in the new year with a brand new episode next week until then good night and go get regressed Bigfoot Collectors Club is produced by Riley Bray. Our theme song is Come Alone by Sun Eaters, courtesy of Lotus Pool Records. If you like the show, please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. It really helps get the podcast to more listeners. To support the show, check out our Patreon page at patreon.com backslash Bigfoot Collectors Club and unlock multiple reward episodes every month.